Having the courage to be yourself unapologetically is one of the bravest things we could ever do. And on the show today, we have such a guest whose confidence and authenticity inspires many. That's why we have her here today on the show. Adela Nyango is here with us on Unscripted right here at Grammar Suits. All right, welcome back. Time to get started. And with me is this beautiful, amazing, Aww. unapologetic, <laughs> funky, cool Adela Nyango. Hey, nice to see you again. What an intro. How Some are esteem. you? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on your show. And I think you're doing an amazing job with oh, this platform. Oh, I really you. do. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, hon. We yeah. go way back. Yeah. Um, we were once office mates. And, and even before that, yeah. um, when you were doing straight up. Oh, yeah? I came on the show to promote my late mom's breast cancer walk really? a long time ago and you were with um, kid. DJ Drew Andrew. How do I not remember yes. that? It was a long time ago. So we go way back, guys. Yes. Way back. So that's why today I'm taking Adele out for a drink. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you thank, thank you so much. You. I hope you'll enjoy it. So yes. Thank it you, Edward. So, so, so good. Designer. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so this show, Unscripted, pretty much yeah. is about, I mean... Life is full of unscripted moments. We mm -hmm. plan, life happens. Exactly. And it's how you recover, how you pick up and move on and yeah. build something of yourself. Yeah. And I think you're one of those women I know who has, and you're so young, yet what I you... Have, I. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine. Yeah. Yet what you've built for yourself. Um, Thank you're an inspiration you. to so many of us yeah. and, and the young people at home. Yeah. But before we get into that, um, to anyone at home who may not know who Adele is, mm -hmm. if you could, um, who is Adele? Wow, it's so crazy. Like answering that question is always so strange because yeah, because I try to stay away from labels, right? So much because they like confine you. Okay. I am a so let's see how yeah. you handle this. So I feel like yeah. I am evolving. I'm an evolving, unapologetically African woman, and to some, yeah. most of them know me from radio because I've been there for the longest time. Yeah. But there's a lot more that I'm doing that doesn't really confine me to that space. And evolving means that tomorrow, I don't know, I could find medicine interesting and <laughs> jump into that. But I think I'm just very aware of the fact that I'm evolving, I'm learning, I'm changing. Um, and that I'm very unapologetic about my Africanness. You yeah. are, yes. you are. And I think just who you are in, in, in your whole entirety. Yeah. Um, this is you, and mm -hmm. if the world has a problem, they can deal with it. <laughs> and I love yes. that about you. Those are theirs. <laughs> yeah. But tell me, how did radio happen? Apparently, you stumbled upon radio. It was not the plan. So I like when you say life just kind of happens. Right? Because I was in... Before I went to uni, I did an, a job shadow stroke internship at Jinnah Din. So I knew PR was, I loved it. I was yeah. like, yeah, PR is the way forward. And is that what you studied? So that's what I studied. I did journalism. My concentration was PR. And I had the plan. Like, I knew this is it. So at the same time, I was, and I am still to date, like, first a lover of poetry. And I do write my own poetry. Um, but then I started an open mic Session. night okay. thing. Because I was like, okay, this poetry, how can it earn me? money as well so i teamed up with a friend of mine called cassandra from university she was doing business okay. and i was like since i'm a creative and numbers normally chenga me okay. let me team up with her so she can run the business side of that show uh -huh. so Smart we'd have girl, like though. yes like if you know this <laughs> is, know, this is where i reach <laughs> yeah. you get someone else to come on board exactly. and do exactly Smart girl. exactly so we did that yeah. for quite a long time we'd have different artists come and share their music share their poetry yeah. And then at the same time, USIU had set up its radio station. So then one of the shows on Saturday was for like Neo Soul and like deep, deep woke people. So they... Isn't that you? <laughs> yeah. I'd like so to like, think. Huh? I'd like to think. <laughs> um, so then they called me and they were like, okay, can you come and just share your poetry on air? So I went and the co-host didn't make it on to the show at the time. So I stayed the entire show. Okay. The next Saturday, they called me back just like that. And they'd record our shows and send them out to media houses. Mm. So when one of them was setting up, they got one of our demos. So when they called me, I thought it was about poetry and they're just like, no, we're actually looking for presenters. Oh, wow. And they only played African music. So which you've always loved. I'm which I've always loved. And because of the open mic gig, I knew a lot of like African or well, Kenyan mm. artists. And so I could, even in the interview, yeah. I could be like, yeah, 
Fena. You know, I could name drop Kiasi <laughs> <laughs> and impress him with my knowledge. And then they threw me onto the drive show. Look at that. And I hadn't finished Compass. I was just like, but I was just like, okay, I have a job, money, like I'm independent. But I, I think thought yeah. I'd, it was a pastime and I'd get done with it and then revert Then go to do what? PR. PR. And that never ever How many years happened. later? Um, nine Yes, it's so weird because I've been at KISS for about six and a half going on seven and at 1FM I was there for two and a half. If you could, um, yeah. career-wise, in terms of learning curves, mm -hmm. what's been your biggest um, to people at home who maybe are just starting out career-wise, mm -hmm. um, who want to get into media, if you could share a few tricks you've learned along the way, what would they be? I think don't conform because for the longest time and even still to date as yeah. much as there's a bit more diversity and yeah. inclusivity in terms of the media and the faces yeah. that we see and the yeah. stories that are being told yeah. there can still be a lot more diversity right yeah. um so you may look at the industry and think unless I am like or unless mm. I look like or unless and I I'll do make things it. like yeah then I'll be able to get the slot so but you can't it's a really the technical things you can learn online even now. Yeah. But what carries you through the industry is, yes, your hard work and work ethic, yeah. but your personality and who you are. What stories do you want to tell? They're very valid. Yeah. Just find a way to be able to tell, tell them, yeah, in a captivating way. Yeah. So I think it's just don't conform. There's a lot of... I know there's that pressure, yes. but you stand out more when you're yourself, and then you just... It comes to you so naturally. You don't have to wake up in the morning and put on a face. Yeah, a face yeah. and be this different person. No one, um, no one can be you. And I think that's your power. Yeah, yeah. I believe you're wise beyond your years. Um, how do you get to that place of such self-awareness? You're so self-aware and comfortable in your own skin mm. and you give that to the world. How do you do that? I think it's years. Like I never fitted in. Yeah. And I guess... It made me feel some type, even just like in primary school, I was among the first to grow tall. I think me and my best and friend tall in you are. Yes. That's why we're seated, guys. I'm like, I can't be looking like her daughter. <laughs> That's and tall you are. It's a, and tall you are. So you can imagine beautiful. you're in class three, yeah. you used to do the height of like a class six year old. Mm -hmm. And it was me and my best friend, okay, one of my best friends at the time, Immaculate, and we were like height mates, right? Okay. So I never fitted in in that circle and in that space because yeah. you know you're in primary school you don't look like everybody else yeah. so you just become so okay with with it that yeah. it stops to bother you as you go along mm -hmm. so even um and at home i think my late mom did such a good job of treating me and my two sisters yeah. as we are like taking you you your you love you you're this way that's okay. good you this is how we so there was Back never, to parenting. yeah, okay. there was never, you have to be like, mm -hmm. you have to all pass math. I never used to pass math. Like, <laughs> pitching to the choir. So okay. I learned at a very young age that the way I am is very valid. And plus fitting in is very expensive. Isn't and it? me, I just don't like sharing my money. Like okay. you have to work so hard to buy the clothes to look the part. Yes. You have to work so hard to be seen at, right. you know what I mean? And why? For whose benefit? So I'm just happy, like, in my young age, if I could go back to that class three-year-old and be like, it's okay, you're tall. Like, this is good. Like, just work with it. Even if it makes you different, it's cool. Because it was a training ground yes. for now to be able to handle the pressure on a Another larger level. scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we walk yeah. and enjoy grammar suits, yeah. um, I like what you've talked about in terms of um, just being aware of who you are, yeah. being comfortable in your own skin and yeah. unapologetic about it. Mm -hmm. And two, to that girl at home who is seeking validation online, yeah. what would you tell her? I think I haven't gotten past it. Yeah. Because it, 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 that seems like it never affects me and I'm always okay. Right? And it's... it's at least you're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm showing that. Because <laughs> there a is um, a troll with pop-up and maybe it's a day when I'm feeling a bit off or weak or something hasn't gone right yeah. with things that I'm trying to achieve. Yeah. So those days, um, it can get to me. And then there are days when I feel like 
I'm on top of the world and nothing can, I can actually be the bigger person yeah. and ignore. Yeah. And then there are days the trolls touch on things that I think are fundamental for me that yeah. we shouldn't take light of. And those ones I address. And, but one thing that helps me in, on all those days is just knowing that it's less about me yeah. and it's more about the person. Because the troll is not, it's not yes. even about you. Thank you. It's not even about you. It's more about the issues or some insecurities that yes. they are having. It's less about you then. Yeah. And so we're only human, right? Yeah. So you have to have like your support system. And I have my support system, my tight knit small circle, who when a troll goes really in, and some of them really go in for you, I can just be like, I can imagine now this one has said this. I know. <laughs> and it's like my own safe space. Right. They remind you of who you are. Yeah, and they're just like, why are you? I don't know you, you know what I mean? And they can gas you up and you need that. I think everybody needs that safe corner. Yeah. So it's human for it to affect you, yeah. um, but it's not about you. It's really not about you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we will now take a short break and we will continue. Welcome back. Um, today we are filming at Gramo Suits, like I mentioned earlier. Beautiful space. Next time you're in Kile, come and check it out and let's go for a swim or have a drink together. I must mention, Adele and I are having mocktails. Yes. Yeah. It's like middle of the day. Guys. Middle of the day. <laughs> so you can Google what mocktails mean. Yes. <laughs> um, Adele, um, I love the fact that you are not afraid to speak out mm -hmm. and speak up against injustices or just whatever you feel something needs to be done, um, you wouldn't hold back. Mm -hmm. And you take it a step further, and you're part of a change agent. And I think your first brave step, I could be wrong, mm -hmm. was when you started your No Means No mm -hmm. campaign. Um, and that was, you could tell us how far back it was. Yeah. And it's focusing on ending the rape culture. Mm -hmm. If you could, if you're comfortable, share with us um, when that happened. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, how that happened and what gave you the courage to speak about it. For me, I survived rape in, rape in 2008 and I was very angry post that mm, for many things and one of them being that we were not having the conversation. Mm. And so, so it was kept being swept under the rug. Yeah? Yes, and I, I'm glad now we're having the conversation with more frequency, but I'm also a bit sad that it's taken so many years to get to this point. So No Means No was born out of that anger and just wondering why am I not seeing the conversation? Mm. Facebook was just like starting up back then and I'm not seeing people talking Talk about, about it. So No Means No first began as an awareness um, campaign just to be able to talk about consent issues mm. from a very artsy and creative background. So we did a lot of like photography with some of my friends. Um, I remember the person, some of the people who um, were models in it were Wendy Kimani, Patricia Kihoro, Edith and it was just I wanted to create awareness using Facebook which was you know the free tool at the time um, and also use my open mic night as well to have monologues monologues rather and people speaking about surviving rape and so there were stories that we documented some got in from the internet my own story as well and have those performed as monologues so that people start understanding okay what is this exactly that we are talking about but from a story perspective because storytelling is really powerful i love how you use what's yeah. in your hand you're a yeah, storyteller so you exactly. use that avenue to communicate mm -hmm. um you know something important that yeah. we need to be discussing if you could how old were you when it happened i want to believe i was 18 18 19. how did it happen um it was a night out and i was crossing from one club to another and whereas I am very aware that I did take a certain risk, I know that that risk didn't warrant for that to, that happen. to happen to me. So I don't believe in saying, you know, like right now when you hear a rape yeah. story, the first thing is like, what was what she, she doing? What was she wearing? What time was that? Was she drunk? What, you know what I mean? So I've gotten as far into my healing to be able to say, actually, none of those things actually matter because if men were raised right mm. it wouldn't matter what i'm wearing it wouldn't matter if it's midnight or midday yeah. you know they would know that a woman is not a plaything it's not something to be owned or doesn't have a right to say no so 
In fact, a man's natural instinct should be to protect the woman. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I really understood that that's the breakdown. Okay. It's not me or any other survivor of rape or any other woman who's been in a similar situation. It's a bigger issue, mm -hmm. which really the onus is on men to have that conversation either amongst each amongst other. Each other. If you want to rope us in, we are willing, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, so that's how No Means No really started. May happens to be Mental Health Month. Yeah. Um, and I think it's important to have such conversations. Mm. I love the fact that with the No Means No campaign, mm. you actually sought out um, yeah. for that kind of assistance and help. Yeah. So I'd like you to speak on, guys, it's okay to not be okay, mm. and it's okay to seek help. And I think we need yeah. to get to a space where we encourage more of that. I don't know, yeah. yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, I think that is so important. It needs to be more than a one month right. <laughs> thing. It's like all year round. Um, because of two things. I think the first thing is just to know in the human journey, there are stresses. Yeah. There are genuine everyday stresses. Yeah. And there are also certain things, traumas that you're carrying with you, either yeah. from childhood or things that you've survived and things like that, that cause you to behave in a certain way. And it's very recommendable for mm -hmm. you to be aware of them and mm -hmm. know what the coping strategies are. These are not things that you can just learn about by yourself, mm -hmm. which is why I really advocate for therapy. Like for everyone okay. you know um and so i even started this podcast legally clueless yes, and exactly. yes what is it about just that we legally don't know clueless. clueless and it's it's okay it's okay um to not know what the next step looks like mm. it's okay to openly talk about certain traumas that you have yeah. it's very human because even with social media there's this face of what humanity looks like which is a very perfect well put together yeah. and, and that is not we I don't even think that exists real. yeah I don't even think that exists it's a filter mm, <laughs> it really is <laughs> so um, for me it's that understanding your human journey being mm. aware of it if therapy is something that works for you I did an episode with my best friend about it because I still a therapy works and she got um, she started taking therapy seriously in 2017 okay. And it really also did wonders for her, things that she didn't know she was carrying from childhood, exactly. causing her to act a certain way. Um, and then the, the other aspect, which obviously I'm not trained to be able to diagnose, but I think it's important when you're talking about mental health conditions, mm. to be able to say there are people who are trained enough to detect and diagnose the same way if I fall here you you can't tell me is your leg your broken leg is, yes. or you know I'll just be like there's pain you know yeah. so there are people who will be able to say okay my moods are like this or my sleeping patterns are all over and this the is what this means yeah so you sit down with them and they'll be like actually here yeah, it's actual condition we diagnose you these are the treatment options and I think as a country we are very far behind in making those services as accessible as i've said it's like a physical ailment yeah. nobody tells you it's okay just get over it exactly. when your leg is broken you know right. so why do we treat mental, mental health, health, health conditions the same no it can't be like that so i think we still need to do a lot of work especially in the actual diagnosis of actual conditions yeah i think like one of the things that stops us so many times and we stagnate is fear. Mm -hmm. So for you, if you could, um, which moments can you remember where fear stopped you from yeah. going to the ne next level? Or you were aware that, uh oh, if I don't do this, yeah. it's choosing fear over faith. Yeah. yeah. I think fear, I keep the battle with fear, it's almost consistent. Isn't it? It's like you win. It's like a never ending boxing minute. So one day you're winning the next round. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you're down. Right? But um, for me, I think it's when my mom passed away. That's when I felt real fear because the person who was always, you know, in your corner, like yeah. that matter what anyone would say, you knew you had this person is yeah. gone and there's nothing that can prepare you to deal with the loss of a loved one. Loved one. You, there's no preparation, right? So that was real fear because I'm like, am I starting again mm -hmm. from fresh and what does that even look like yeah. and you can imagine for me it was not when I was super young mm -hmm. it was seven years ago so I was an adult yeah. but it still hits me losing hard you know what I mean yeah, yeah. I, still I lost mine as well eight 
about nine yeah eight, mm. nine, nine years ago look at that exactly you never really get over it you don't and yeah. it's so every time i have to make i mean i used to talk to her about like my contracts or whatever mm. so now every time i have to make a big decision You're there's lying. that fear because i'm like is it right so i'm just like just give me a sign send an sms from heaven you know it's yeah. the fear never goes but i I've always wanted to, at the end of it, like my exit interview of life, mm -hmm. to say I did not just exist, I lived. Mm -hmm. And I think the difference between existing and living is fear. Like living is on the other side. So yeah. fear is what makes you like you're in a routine. You're just going through life. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> when we come back, so much, so many nuggets. I hope you guys are tweeting away. Um, we'll discuss more with Adele and just get to get a better understanding of who she is and what she's up to. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Inscripted. We're back here at Grammar Suits, loving every minute of it. Here with Adele. Thanks for coming on the show, Thanks my dear. Thanks for having me. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. And being brave enough to share your story with us. Thank you. Like I said, this show is about just breaking the culture of silence mm -hmm. and just having necessary conversations. Yeah. Um, before the break, you touched on um, when you lost your mom seven yeah. years ago. Yes, seven years. Um, I feel like the conversation on grief is such a, like it has layers, like it's yeah. so heavy. Um, like if you look back, like when I lost my father, um, nine years ago, yeah. like I look at that woman in that period for a time and I'm like, what, who was that? Yeah. What are those things that I was doing? Yeah. And grief, we can respond in different ways to grief. For yeah. you, um, what were your lessons during that period and how are you? I yeah. think it's just, my lesson number one was just to take every day as it comes, even now, seven years mm -hmm. later. Um, because at the time, there's no manual. Yeah. You don't know. This is you know how like day how seven will be. Maybe and a heartbreak. Yeah. I'll go and I have my snacks and my girls, and I know by you know yeah. I'll get back on my feet. This, with this, you it's the greatest heartbreak mm. of all time. Yeah. Like all other heartbreaks are Can't just compare. a lie. Like you yeah. know. So I think for the first time, I try to run away from dealing. Mm because I didn't know how to, to deal. deal, yeah? And you go through anger, you go through like extreme sadness, yeah. and there's, no, there's nothing anyone around you can tell you yeah. that will make it all right. Right? So even the cliches of, you know, I try telling people like, stop telling guys that it's going to be okay. It's mm. not, it's going to be different. Because okay in my head at that time is my mom being it's there. There's nothing okay about this situation. Yeah. Um, so I think I tried to run away from it. And now I've learned to allow myself to feel. So whether that means taking hour by hour, day by day. Yeah. And if I wake and allow myself to cry. Mm. If I wake up and I'm a bit, I'm a bit low because of something. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, she's here. I could talk to her about this and whatever. Mm. I reduce what's on my plate like that I day because we we try and move feel, on so quickly yeah. like I've been here too long I need to yeah and then you start feeling like no I'm just if someone asks me what's wrong it's the same thing right and they're just going to be like I wait wait same and you start yeah. feeling guilty, guilty for saying it then you feel guilty for saying that yes and so it can be a quite overwhelming so for me I just take it a day as it comes I allow myself to feel I allow myself to cry yeah. I remember even immediately after it happened I was still on air at 1FM wow. and that I'd be crying in between shows mm. like in between links I'm right sorry. and but you see you have to go through that because the suppressing doesn't it'll just you will find yourself in a meeting I know you'll find yourself you know on the roads Yes. I, I remember I had a moment like that when, yeah because he passed when I was on radio yeah at Capitol and then I just finished reading the news yeah and then I was fumbling like I was just not having a good day yeah. I think I'd just gone back from the funeral just gone yeah. back to work and I messed up then I was had an outburst of ah yeah like then the guy's like hey hey What's get across up? me yeah. you okay and what I said was I was angry he's gone yeah like he was a pro at this he would have told me at this point, you do, do this, this yeah. you do that. And something he said gave me an aha moment of, yeah. imagine the time he was here, he did what he was supposed to do. Yeah. And until today, even when I have those moments, I remind myself, okay, he was here for the time he was yeah, meant to be here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it never ends. It never ends. I don't never think ends. it's, you know, people ask, how do you get over it? I'm like, my friends, you do not. Mm -hmm. And those are some bitter truths. 
you know this is some and so even now whenever i go for any funeral of you know somebody that i know has lost someone my tears at that point are for this person i know because i'm like aki i would not wish this journey on anyone and i know what comes well to some extent because people grieve differently but i'm like it's such a painful road for you know i'm not saying it's going to be painful for two years it's going to be painful for one month yeah, so I'm like, I cry because I'm like, I wouldn't want I somebody nice. else to be in this situation. But I've just learned like, it's okay to be very human about it. It's okay to cry. It doesn't make you weaker. In fact, I feel like you've got to be pretty strong to be able to articulate your emotions. Right? Yeah, it takes a very strong person to do that. So I'm okay with it. I'm like 100% okay with it. And... Tomorrow I could wake up and be very sad yeah. as I'm here smiling with you. Tomorrow could be a bad day and I'm just like, well, I guess I need to cancel certain meetings, yeah. you know, take things slowly. So be easy on yourself. Mm -hmm. Show yourself True. some grace. True. Um, so for you, how are you keeping your mom's memory alive? You know, at the very beginning, I think to some extent, I wanted to honor her, but I didn't want to become her. Because mm. that's, you can fall into that trap yeah. so i know it took me a long time That's to figure cool. out yeah. how do i do this in my own yeah. way so that i'm not struggling to become to fill in yeah fitting some shoes that are not for me they're not mine too big for yeah. me to fit in so last year i remember because i've always wanted to tell stories african stories highlights um creatives yeah. and i was like okay let's make um a line and we'll call it Anyango, which was my mom's middle name. So that's where the jacket and was wild things like a denim jacket, but it had like this strong African. So woman. not the lipstick. So you it had was, jackets. I had jackets. Lipsticks was longer. That's why most people know the lipstick. So we did the jacket for about three, two to three months. We did um, a necklace, which was like a, it was called, it was written strength and guvu at the at the back um and then we did the lipstick because my mom would never leave the house without, without lipstick, lipstick. but hers was red so we did like a purple because i'm like man I'm not red so <laughs> um so i really and we documented the entire process how these creatives do their work how they interpreted various because the pieces um, represented various characteristics that mm. my mom had. So the lipstick was limitless, the um, strength was the necklace, and then the jacket was about power. And so I was like, I was so happy with the project. I'm like, after so many years, because, you know, it's, it was six years, because I did it last year, 2018, mm. it was six years since her passing. And then I was like, ah, this is how I would do it. Yeah, them. exactly. Okay. Um, and also just to be me. Because I wouldn't think she would be happy with me trying to be anything so other nice. than... Because as I told you earlier, she worked so hard to celebrate... Your strengths. Uh, and my... In, yeah. Individuality. I, individuality. So what a disgrace that. after all that work. Then I'm like, well, I'm not going to be me, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I could honor her by just being true to myself and I can attest yeah. to that like I said you're one of the most unapologetic women I know thank you and I love the fact that like I said you step out and you decide to be a change agent yeah. now you have a new initiative um, yeah tell us about that yeah yeah so it's the Adelo Nyango initiative yes. um, which deals with creating opportunity and doing advocacy work for youth and women okay. um, so in 2017 because I you know from my listeners they had this hashtag team Adele mm. and I would hang out with them and I just felt it wasn't fair that they would contribute to the show and there was nothing of value that I was contributing back. You, you felt that way? Yeah. I'm so, sure there was, but you but felt like, like tangible. I need to do more. Uh, I mean, surely, yeah. Okay. So I, I, we would do like charity events, but I needed more structure. So in 2017, we decided to register the members of Team Adele because I was like, I need to understand you mm. and your problems to be able to even offer any sort of solution. So while people were registering for elections, I you registered for <laughs> Team Adele. Exactly. <laughs> so from that, I understood, okay, access to employment or mm. um, courses that can make them run businesses properly. Wow. So I'm like, okay, fine. So as I mentioned earlier, I did a job shadow stroke internship. And that was before I got into campus. Yeah. 
So I was like, okay, let's have a job shadow program. Mm -hmm. Teamed up with Fuzu, and we have that ongoing. We are in our second round currently. Um, and some participants even get hired afterwards. So it doesn't matter whether you have a degree or not. You go through this and you learn skills on the job. And you know, like, employers can spot this one. This there's something here, right? Yeah. And, and we're moving to a space where I think young people just need a foot in the door. Mm. And they'll take it up from there. I agree. So um, that's the youth angle. So we have the job shadow program. We, have, we give scholarships with autonomy to the team Adele members. Okay. We've done something with Nylab for the next economy for young people who want to get into employment or entrepreneurship. So it's like about a seven month course. So now we're trying to hopefully now reach young people outside mm. of Nairobi and use a digital platform to do that. So we're just about to um, announce a partnership with Google that will allow us to be able to reach people Good outside job. of job. Nairobi, young people. And now currently people can get you from the online spaces. If yes, they want to be part so of. if you want to register, you just go to adelonyango.com, okay. you will see the tab for the Adelon Yango initiative and there's like a joint team Adel because we I need to understand where are you in Kenya? Yes. How old are you? And what are, are you your needs? campus? What mm. are you interested in? And what's going what do you feel like you don't have an opportunity to do and you want that created for you. Um, and then for women it's just to have conversations to bring it down mm. to the point where we can have conversations where every day for example, yeah. me when I take a cab, sharing the trip is not an option. I have to because of safety. I'm yes. like, I don't know. Yes. That's a woman's everyday. If I'm going to town, I have to dress in a certain way. Mm. If I'm passing what I'm jengo, yeah. I have my earphones on mm. because if I say no or if I don't react to advancements, mm. there's an aggression that I'm not able to handle. Yeah. yeah. Why should that be? Why are, those why are we struggles? okay? Yeah. yeah. Why are we okay with that? So we are launching a platform next month in June to be able to address these issues in a conversation between men and women that can hopefully, it doesn't have to result in tangible solutions, but just to get people Thinking aware, different. like, okay, yeah. this, this is not right. Yeah, this like, is oh, not right. It's an issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So we have decided to like bring it, started from the bottom up. Um, yeah, so that's where the initiative is right now. Yeah. You're amazing. Thank um, you. If you could speak on... Because this is mentorship mm -hmm. in, in very many ways, yeah. which I feel is something that I'm glad this generation is doing more of. Mm -hmm. um, so if you could touch on the benefits you've seen of it, of yeah. mentorship, and the importance of it yeah. um, in any career, field, or environment. Yeah. I think, some, uh, for me, I'm more interested in, and I, whenever people talk mentorship and stuff, I'm like, on the other side. Yeah. Of, the, of, of, of the spectrum when you know the conversation is being had because I'm so paranoid of losing my individuality I never mm. want it to be that I'm trying to be like mm. right and so when you go into mentorship either in your career or whatever it is you have to be aware that if it's a technical type of approach then it has to be a technical type of approach not that you now are mirroring every aspect of this other person who lived their own life, made their own mistakes. Okay. Um, you have to be aware, me, my end game is this. Mm. The information and knowledge from this person's journey is going to help me in to mine. My end game. Yeah, yes. but not that. Or oh, they did it this way. So, detour, mean, let's able. know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it's in every space, it's to be very aware of that. So for me, I don't even look at it as mentorship. Mm. For me, it's more of human. I get inspired by people's stories. I'm always online, like engaged talks. I'm always, I'm like, hey, right. you overcame, you know, yeah. and it gives me that. So for, for me, I look more for inspiration. Okay. As we wrap up, um, like you're so, you've achieved so much. And I love that you're always reaching and seeking. Mm. Um, so I'm curious to know, what else are you reaching for? Yeah. And what would you like to be remembered for, Adele? I think for me, it's mainly happiness. I want to be extremely happy in whatever choices I make and mm. in whatever um, projects I'm undertaking. I want to be happy through the pressure they'll come with, mm. happy through the challenges they'll come with. And if it's creating opportunity, if it's telling diverse African stories, I'm good with that. Whatever the, the shape that takes, 
I'm not sure. Because <laughs> you can only plan this far. Yeah. And then life, life kind unfolds. Of happens yeah. and you don't want to be a slave to a plan where now when it's changing, like, no, mm. it's meant to be like this. And then things pass you by. So for me, it's to really just tell more African stories because I feel like they're not enough being told and to be able to create opportunity. And I think that contributes to your legacy because then somebody will remember, mm. I went through ABCD and I got this. Yeah. And you will live through that person. They may go on to create more opportunities for other people because of what you awesome. gave them. So yeah, well, that's who I am. <laughs> you had questions. You handled like a pro. <laughs> Thanks. May your legacy live on. Thank, Thank you so you. much for sharing your story and for doing such amazing things to Thank the community. Um, that's, that's, that's what's up, if I could put it that way. <laughs> to those at home, I think we've learned one too many things from Adele. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to reach out to her, yeah. we'll share her tags online. For the show is right below. Make sure you tune in next week, same place, same time. Special thanks to Grammar Suits. Have yourself a fantastic week. Good night and God bless. Mm -hmm.